Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the earnings of a controlled foreign corporation investment in U.S. property. What is the big idea behind this earnings of controlled foreign corporation invested in U.S. property? Here's how it works. We have an investor that is a shareholder in a controlled foreign corporation. So he's a shareholder in this corporation and what's going to happen is this. The earnings from this corporation is not taxed unless the individual brings back that money, repatriate this money. How about if this corporation makes a profit, the individual don't, don't bring the money back. However, the company will use this profit to buy USA a property. What would happen now? Well, this individual, if you think of it, they control this property because if they control this, if they are a shareholder in this controlled foreign corporation, in a sense, they own part of this U.S. property. They can enjoy it. They can, they control, somehow they control it. So the main idea is to do what? Is to stop U.S. shareholders of controlled foreign corporation, this individual, from avoiding paying taxes by keeping their foreign company's profit outside the U.S., but still use them in the U.S., like buying property so this is the big idea so the rule here is is to make it as if the foreign company invests its earning in the u.s as if bringing the money back home and it get taxed so what we're saying is if this controlled foreign corporation purchase u.s property the individual that owns shares in this controlled foreign corporation as if they brought the money for themselves and what happened under those circumstances you get taxed so the ends the essence of this rule is to tax u.s shareholders on their proportional share of any increase in the control foreign corporations earning that are reinvested in u.s property during the year so if the cfc's purchased u.s property it's as they brought the money back and they gave it to the u.s shareholder so this is what we'll be discussing we'll discuss a little bit more in details and how we do the how, how we perform the computation but that's the big idea let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So, the earnings invested in U.S. property rule applied to U.S. shareholders of controlled foreign corporation CFCs require them to include in their taxable income their share of two main type of earnings. Now, if you're, if, you, if you're a shareholder in a CFC, well, if the CFC earns passive income and certain type of income that are easily moved, well, passive income usually, then you are taxed on that. Also, you are taxed on, and this is what we will add here, earning, earnings invested in U.S. property, which aims to prevent U.S. taxpayers from avoiding taxes by bringing non-support F earnings back in the U.S. in form of something other than dividend, such as what? They buy property, they buy a loan. This is designed to do what? This rule is designed to discourage tax-free repatriation of earnings through indirect means. So what we're saying is, if you take the profit from the CFCs, and invest them in the U.S., it's as if the shareholder received their proportional share of the profit because they got reinvested in the U.S. Now, what is U.S. property? Invested it in U.S. property. So, because if, if you bring it back as dividend, that's, that's different. But if you bring it back indirectly, you are taxed. What are U.S. property? U.S. property is defined as tangible asset. So, if you purchase real estate, office building, equipment, shares in U.S. companies, debt owed by U.S. individuals or entities, basically bonds, right to use intellectual property like patent or copyright within the U.S. Simply put, you're using this money to enjoy something. And when you're using this money to enjoy it as if they gave it to you, although they did not, the, the CFCs is, is making this purchase, but it's as if you are making this purchase and you will be taxed on that. So how do we perform the tax computation? The, the tax calculation in involve comparing 
the average value, the adjusted basis of U.S. property during the tax year against the value at the end of the previous year. We'll look at your adjusted value of the property year one versus year two. What happened to that property? And this comparison is made using the value at the end of each quarter to determine the average for the year, helping us to identify any increase in the investment in U.S. property, which is then subject to taxation for U.S. shareholder. So we would look at what was the average book value of your property last year to this year, and we'll do this on a quarterly basis. And if there is an increase, we slap you with a tax. The best way to illustrate this is to do what? Work in example. We have Green Corp, a controlled foreign corporation with no previous investment in the U.S., acquires a piece of real estate property in the U.S. for $2 million in the third quarter of year two. This real estate investment remain under Green's corporation ownership through the end of year two. Determine Green Corp's increase in earnings invested in the U.S. for year two. Well, to calculate the Green Corp increase in earnings for year two, we assess the value of the property invested at the end of each quarter and then find the average for the year. Well, the first quarter, zero. There was no investment. The second quarter, zero. The third quarter, we had two million. The fourth quarter, we had two million invested as well, remain invested. So what do we do next? We're going to find the average. We're going to take um, for the first quarter, zero. For the second quarter, zero. For the third quarter, two. For the fourth quarter, two. That's four. And what are we going to do? We're going to take the four and divided by four quarter. So simply put, the increase was one million. The increase was one million. And this is how we perform the computation. We'll take the first quarter, second, third, average them up. Then we'll divide the average investment by the number of quarters. What does that mean? It means a Green Corp increased earnings invested in the US for year two by a million. This means the U.S. shareholder of Green Corp would be taxed on the respective share. So let's assume this individual here that we started with owns, just for the sake of illustration, you remember this individual here, owns 30% of the CFC. Well, if they earn 30% of the CFC, we're going to say, guess what, my friend? You owe 30% of a million. You you you. You brought to the U.S. $300,000. That's that you, you are responsible for paying taxes and whatever your tax rate is. Happens to be 20, 30, let's assume 30%. And you have to pay $90,000 in taxes because of this increase. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. A U.S. shareholder of a controlled foreign corporation must include in their taxable income the pro rata share of what? All global earnings subpart F income and earnings invested in the U.S. property, only the dividend received from the CFC, capital gain from the sale of property by the CFC. What should they include on a pro rata basis? They should include in pro rata basis any earnings received, any earnings invested in the U.S. property from, by the CFC. So what's the best answer? Any earnings invested, any sub part of income and earnings invested in the US. So if we brought money back to the US and we invested this money, the shareholder in the CFC in the controlled foreign corporation, which is a US shareholder, will have to include in their taxes a pro rata share of those earnings that are reinvested in the US. And the purpose for this once again is to do what? Is to discourage to discourage you from bringing the money indirectly so you repatriate it tax-free. They don't want that. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you prepare for the CPA exam, accounting courses, any accounting professional certification you are studying for. Good luck. Study hard. Invest in yourself. And of course, stay safe.